to wave your arms all over the place while falling into the hole? Because if so, you nailed it. Yes, it all went great. Wow. To think yeah. that this show originally started as a pitch to be a family as cannibals. Yes. To you guys doing this for 10 years to now being a feature length film. I mean, first of all, I just had to say congratulations because it's huge and I'm we did so it. happy for you. We did do it. You guys did it. We did do it. You did it. You're sitting here yeah. and you spent so much time with these characters <laughs> that I feel like they must feel like a body part to you at this point. Yeah, so my like a tail that people judge. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Gene, come to life. I'm freaking out. My first question to you is, what part of you lives in each of these characters? That's what I want to know. Like, how did you make this character your own? And if you pulled, I'm a pop culture nerd, so if you pulled anything from pop culture to bring into your character, I'd love to know that too. John Roberts, I'd love to start with you because okay. I spent all my college years watching your viral YouTube videos of you impersonating you. your mom. Yeah. And there's this one line you would say, that was, um, oh, look at the ducks. That just kills yeah. me to this day. <laughs> sure. And I feel like there's so much of your mom and Linda. There is so much of my mom and Linda. And I've actually been doing that impersonation of her since I was probably like in second, third grade, because she's from Brooklyn. And it, she was always so funny sounding to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, she also had a thing of wigs that she would let me play with. And I would <laughs> pretend I was her going to like, Bamberg is, I don't know. It used to be Macy's was Bamberger's. You're probably too young, but, um, and you know, all her momisms, you know, that I use, uh, they're, it, it's very similar to Linda. Um, and I, I, I feel like it is like a, a limb a little bit cause it's my mom, you know? So there's so much, there's so much of her and Linda. The best part of Linda yeah. is I, I wanted to ask you is do you randomly in your life just bust out in song because she'll just walk into a kitchen and be like cabinets cabinets cups of cups i do i do it with my dogs a lot i sing a lot of songs to them uh, about food and just like kisses and cuddles and stuff um yeah that's a lot of improv songs all day long mostly and john also has a music career that's, that's correct true. yes Yes, of all of us, he's the he's an actual yeah. singer. Check out his album, Kisses and Cuddles. <laughs> Wait, that, that would have, I would buy that true. album. Yeah, that's, that's the follow-up. Songs for dogs. <laughs> right. It's <laughs> <and> cuddles. <laughs> Who's the kissy cuddle do? Kiss and cuddles. It's for, kiss dog, for dog cuddles. owners. For yep. dog owners who can't sing. So yep. pets. Yep. Uh, right. He does. He takes the, the hard work. And, and one of my songs, uh, Stink a Little Stinkums. Yeah. Stink yeah. a Little Stink it do. That's uh. That's a, that's an earworm right that, now. They love that one. Best in show. I think Catherine O'Hara goes off with. Um, oh, he stole it. <laughs> yeah. Would love to know what part of you lives in Bob. I don't think any character on TV says, oh my God, more than Bob Belcher does. Like, <laughs> yeah, tell I, me what part of you lives in him and how many like inflections of oh my God. <laughs> they still uh, make me do it uh, live uh, for every take. I'm shocked that they can't reuse the 7,000 oh my gods they have already recorded. So, uh, and there's usually like three or four for a show. We were just discussing that with the last episode. I said oh my god four times and I suggested that maybe we write one episode where Bob just says oh my god the whole time. <laughs> that would be iconic. Uh, okay. um, I'd love to know a part of you though. Oh, you well. Uh, into Bob. Uh, that's funny. Lauren and I go way back uh, with a bunch of different kinds of characters that I did for other animated shows for him. Um, and they were much more aggressive and uh, uh, more pompous and loud. Uh, and when I started Bob's, it was really fun to play a different role altogether and let uh, the people who play the other characters uh, be the, the loud uh <laughs> really the the humor of the show and so um how does it yeah, relate the, to the you show, i'm getting how to, does it relate to, it. to you getting to it i'm getting i'm getting to it let me get to it let me get to it let me get to it your soul let me get to it it's your soul why do you have time what it's your ethereal she essence that's poured into Bob. No, I it's know the way you raised your She soul. asked me, so let <laughs> me. Right? I'm dead. We Say tried it. to ask you, but it's it's literally another. It's actually, well, wait, we'll see actually, what happens when you they are with you. Benjamin, you mentioned uh, I, will say, oh, I don't think they're going to get to ask us. I will now. say that. Uh, I will say that there's an interior uh, part of me oh. that's a lot like Bob. Oh. He's quiet and a little oh. reserved and shy. We didn't see that a couple minutes ago. 
No, you mentioned because, like, you when, mentioned past yeah, animation. When you poke the bear. You've done with Lauren. <laughs> <What> the... <laughs> and I want to go deep cut here real quick okay. for Dr. Katz fans. Because a lot of people say that your character Ben Katz is kind of like a young Bob. So did you bring anything from like Dr. Katz into Bob? Hmm. No, I mean, I actually think if, if I brought anything to Bob, it was me being a dad. Uh, they sort of coincided. So my son was I probably like five, five or six when the show started. Uh, so I was a dad at that point. So I borrowed from me. I love that. Yeah. Mm. Dan, Tina is, and I hate saying this word because we use it so much in society and I feel like I'm to blame for it, but she's just so iconic. And I feel like a lot of people don't know that she was originally supposed to be a Daniel. Mm -hmm. And you're Dan. So what part of you, Dan, lives inside Tina? And, and who is she at her core? I mean, Tina is is kind of um, paradoxically both like quiet and awkward and like confident and cool all at the same time. Um, that I'm like, the confident cool part came from me. I didn't really know how to play quiet and awkward. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> um, but it, yeah, it, it's amazing how many people are like, I so, so relate to that character. Um, like I really felt like when they, especially when they switched from being a boy to a girl, like it was going to be almost like a gimmick character, like talks like me, but it's a girl and she says like weird things, but then the writers just did such a good job of giving her more and more nuance and personality and depth that like it all of a sudden became something that everyone's, or not everyone, but certain types of people are like, that. that's exactly me. That's exactly what I was like. Um, which, which is so cool to hear that. It is. Everyone resonates with Tina. <laughs> um, and Louise, too. I love Louise's sort of, her lack of filter and her sense of bravery is so awesome. So obviously, same question to you, Kristen. So cool to meet you, by the way. Like, yeah, thank you for yeah. entertaining me for my entire life. And also, has her sense of bravery seeped into your life? Ooh. Yes. I, I Louise is definitely... Um, me in my childlike, you know, it's, it's so fun to be a child. You're allowed to be um, emotional and big and like make mistakes and splash around and do dumb things and have enthusiasm, which is, I feel like adults, if they have enthusiasm, everyone's like, what's wrong with them? Are they on some, you know, but children get to be like, yeah, and it feels so fun. You know, like, right now, I look weird putting that out of my, as an adult person. Yeah, what are you on? Yeah. Exactly. Orange juice. Yeah. So it's fun that I get to be that with Louise. Um, I would say something that I, that I try to do um, is not have regrets. And I think Louise does that too. But I, if it's something I feel like, oh, I'm too scared, I always think like, okay, you're scared, but are you going to feel regretful that you didn't do this like like future Kristen is always like I'm always protecting future Kristen from not feeling like damn it um even if it doesn't work I just always want to try it that's so beautiful especially knowing that the message people are going to get out of this movie from Louise specifically um with you having said that so I love that thanks, thanks Naz. yeah thanks Kristen <laughs> Eugene hi Jean is the most hilarious he just is, like, straight up facts. Um, I love his love for music, which we also get to see in this movie. I know a fan actually gifted you a keyboard. So I'd yes. love to know what you brought to Gene and what informed him. And are you a fan of music? I mean, I'm a fan of music. I can't really play music. Um, and, in fact, I would say Gene sings better than me because the way they record it is I, like, repeat a line after they do it and then they edit it together. So Gene is, like, my dream singer. Um, but I think that he, I, uh, he has a, like a lot, I think a lot of enthusiasm. Um, the, so maybe a certain love of jokes and enthusiasm and then pop culture stuff. Gene, uh, mentions an un, a disproportionate amount of stuff that occurred in the seventies and eighties pop culturally. Yeah. And I believe that might be as a result of my age more than his. Um, so yeah, I bring probably a lot of love of Simon and Simon. And whatever else I've mentioned, modest, or, 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 yeah, and, and a Salman modest Rushdie. Modest. I think the second episode we have an improv involving. Uh, oh, yes. That's that's my pop culture reference, Salman Rushdie. Uh, and food. but where we that was the, a lot uh, of foods. Yeah. Well, we debate whether the, he wrote the, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Right. Which is, yes. Um, <laughs> yes. So uh, that so was like early on, Yaakov and then yeah, a lot of foods, um, a lot of the foods that Jean's I love. read the Satanic verses. That's yeah. True. Yes, and, and he enjoyed it. He was like, 
he connected. Um, I forget if I've answered your question, you, but I did talk a bunch. Yeah, you did. You did. I love because those references are the best part of Gene, and I love that that's like really who you are and what you bring to it. So thank you for that, Larry. Yes. I love Teddy. <laughs> Teddy's sense of loyalty and commitment to the Belchers is like every single millennial girl's dream. Like if I could have that sense of loyalty and commitment I didn't know in my that. life. I, yeah. What part of you is in Teddy and why do you think he is so loyal to the Belchers? I think that he is trying to find the thing that's missing in his own life and fulfilling it with the people in the Belcher family. And um, yeah, I think I connect with that with this group of people. I feel lucky to work with this group of people. Oh. Um, and I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't it real, but you, no, I think there's a great very group lucky. of people. We feel lucky to have Larry. <laughs> and I think they're a lot of fun. Very lucky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Larry, that was such a beautiful <laughs> sentiment. I yeah, love that. it's true. And it is lucky to be able to mm. work, especially in this industry, with like great people and just talking to you guys right now. You guys really are just like everyone a here really likes each other. Yeah, yeah. you could tell. Mm. I I love you guys. Um, I also love all the lines in like this show and the movie. Um, I used to produce The Bachelor. And my favorite line ever was in season two. Louise has to write an essay about someone who's really important to her. And Tina says, well, I'd write about the guy who flies the helicopter on The Bachelor. And I'm like, that guy's actually really important to me. And so that line has always stuck with me my entire life as a producer. Because I'm like, that man is so important to me. What line, I want to know from all of you, what line from your characters really resonated with you? Maybe it's a line you improvised or something that's just so memorable and is stuck with you. Mm. Um, and feel free to act it out if you want. You don't have to. I'd love to just start with you, Dan, and go this way. I mean, I think the line, um, I don't even remember what the episode's from, but um, girls have uteruses, boys have deuteruses. Is, um, <laughs> memorable. <laughs> because it's like, um, it, I feel like if anyone else was saying it, it'd be such an awkward thing, but it kind of somehow flows naturally from Tina's, Tina's thought process. Um, there's a, in the episode, I forget which one it is, but it's with Tina. It's recently, it's like last season, and Tina's worried about her looks, whether or not she looks uh, pretty enough. And Louise doesn't know. She's like, what are faces, but like like eye holes and, and a mouth hole, like just holes. And it, like, like beauty to her is, <laughs> I feel like what beauty should be to everybody, which is who cares? Um, and I love that line. I mean, Nora Smith wrote that. She's, we met her. She's great. Love that. Um. There was a line, they animated it, it ended up getting cut, but there was a scene where the kids are in the diner and they're excited to visit their grandparents. And uh, they're talking about why they like to visit their grandparents and like the things they let them do. And there was a line where Jean says, uh, they let they let me eat all the Tylenol PM I want. <laughs> and they animated it, and then they were like, you know what, maybe we won't <laughs> like, Maybe we can't actually include that. And uh, but and I think you could even hear me like laughing as I'm like, little, like and it was fun. That was a line that I will hopefully work back into it one day. You'll you'll get to mention Tylenol. PM yeah, yeah. At some point. Tylenol, now uh, you owe me $100 million. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will have to go with, I love you, but you're all terrible. Uh, that's on a t-shirt uh, that my dad wears. Yeah. I feel like that's, <laughs> that's like the, like, I was very early on. In the, it might have been the first episode of the show. So that sort of set the tone. But that's as cynical as Bob ever got I guess and he's he's, he's gone, gone the other way since for me I think uh, I uh, when Linda said when I die uh, I want you to cremate me and throw my ashes in Tom Selleck's face <laughs> um, <laughs> that resonates with me because it's actually my mother did say that <laughs> and, uh, That's amazing. and we got her we she actually met uh, him because my friend was on this show with him and um, but I think it might have changed to Hugh Jackson now Hugh, is that Hugh, yeah. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman, right. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackson. Well, the great thing about ashes is you can throw them in so many celebrities' faces. Exactly. <laughs> once, you're, once you're cremated, it's like... Hugh really Jackson, yeah. here we go. A little for Jared Leto. Right. Uh, I think me and my sister will split duties yeah. after yeah, exactly. that. I mean... You know, uh, we'll ambush a lot of people. Oh, sure. yeah, yeah. All of my mom's famous. Yeah, we hope if uh, this her, gets nominated and yeah. we're invited Everyone's, to anything, yeah. get ready. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. The Chippendales dancers. Anyone my mom loves. 
Well, I hope you live. That's yeah, a lot yeah, of, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a lot of ashes. Not this movie. When the yeah. fourth Bob's movie yeah. is nominated. Yeah. Well, yeah. God forbid yeah. she's, she's not dead. So. Yeah. yeah. I think. Oh, I think mine's a something that they wrote, and it, I didn't realize how funny it was until they it was animated, and like we see the sh movie, uh, the shows a year later, and it was something the writers wrote where Teddy's driving. And he's singing, I wish my radio worked. I wish my radio worked. Or, yeah, something to that effect. Such a daddy yeah. line. It was fun. So good. Ugh, there's so many good lines in this movie. In this movie, I love this movie because so many of your character storylines just propel forward. And I want to know specifically from you, Kristen, and H. John Benjamin, how you think the Bob's Burgers movie moved your character storyline forward. Well, because in this movie, we talk about why she wears the bunny ears, which has been the question, the most asked question for Louise since the, or since we started. And I know they've been keeping that in their back pocket for a big moment, and, and they decided to make it a movie. Um, so you get to see why she's wearing them, and um, I don't want to give too much away, mm. and whether or not she decides mm. to keep them, and why. And yeah, and she's a kid. So, you know, she's like, it's just another moment of being a kid where you have to evolve your emotions a bit. Um, thank you, Kristen. You're welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I just like, you hadn't been thanked at all in this interview. I just wanted to. Oh, yeah. thank you for um, thanking me. I, she actually did thank you. Yeah, I think Naz has been like, so not only heaping praise, but also just a genuine fan. It's been really delightful. Yeah, really. Yeah. I think uh, Bob, like, for the, I think Bob probably in the certainly in the beginning of the movie for the first time is sh uh, shaken uh, more than he's ever been by mm. what what's going on around him. Yeah. Um, so I think that he. That's a big moment for Bob, and it's not like that's not unfamiliar for him. He's always sort of under the water a little bit, uh, trying to tread water with the business and the family. But uh, I think this one is the like the biggest uh, challenge for him, and uh, the kids, or really Linda first. Well, always Linda, his rock of Gibraltar. Yeah, and then you know, behind and then... every unsuccessful man is an unsuccessful woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been saying and that then for I think. Years. That's I right. do think that the kids in this really do, especially in the movie, pull uh, together and really try and help. They are kids, and they 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 they, they can mess it up a little bit, but uh, everybody really pulls together for Bob in this one, and he'll probably remember that. It's the best, and it was probably fun for you as a dad to bring that sort of dadness to that to that. For yeah, you. and I also want to note that I am far worse of a dad in real life than Bob. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, I love you. And You're all terrible. <laughs> Amazing. Um, my last question to you guys. <laughs> I'm so excited for everyone to see this in the movie theaters. Yeah, and I'm a major here. fan of cheeseburgers and just food in general. So I want to hear from all of you. What movie concession theater snack would you pair with this film? We'll start with you, Larry. Popcorn. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, that. they sell it at all the yeah, theaters. <laughs> they have it. Mm -hmm. Good choice. Popcorn <laughs> and uh, edibles. No, um, um, I like sometimes in the theater it's popcorn and then something sweet like a gummy something. The yeah. sweetest. Do you put like it in a, there? A, like a, do you put it in the popcorn? I've seen people oh, yeah. do that. You oh, do that? No, that's the peanut M&M's in the popcorn. You put that? Do that? She knows. Yeah. You've done that? Wow. Everybody does it. So you want really? little they kids do? to be yeah. you want little kids to be really high when they see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's me, John. For me. With sugar, not with. That's what I want to eat. Mm. What would you have, John? I'd sneak in food. I'll, I'll sneak <laughs> in something. Bologna sandwich. Oh, like a... Uh, egg salad sandwich? Oh, egg Like salad. chicken tikka masala? Would you ever sneak in chicken yeah, tikka something masala? Like, something really good. A little yeah. pho? Like, what are you going to do? Yeah, like oh. a, big, a yeah. big noodle Ooh. soup. Uh, <laughs> with some <laughs> fresh... Nice, fresh... Yeah, that's great. Summer rolls. Oh, yeah. Right, some a little cooler. Yeah. Like a cooler. Ramps. Really ramps, ramps if they're in yeah. season. Yeah. Some yeah. Get those I would bring a mashed potato bar. So it's like, you have mashed potatoes, but then it's... 
scallions Perfect. and you know yeah. uh, bacon cheese. Yeah, There's no bacon mashed potato and, uh, bar. Who what? can cut a baked potato? Yeah, bar, right? well, yeah. yeah it's a well, big, well, well, you, well, you, you mashed potato, potato bar. I love a whole. First of all, <laughs> where, where do you live? Who ever no, heard of that? Where do I live? Potato bar. Okay, so I created a new business and I brought it to the movies. She wants us to stop. We're wrapping the episode. Stop. I just need to hear from you guys, and we're done. Hot dog. I'm hungry. Yeah. With wine. You can get wine at the Arc. Like, oh, did they shut down? Oh, that's right. Well, you can go to the Falma oh. Cinema Pub and get nachos or a Caesar Alamo salad. Drop or, Alamo or, drop you know, yeah, I would, I would pair with a drink. Sneak in a beer. I'd say sure. don't get a large soda because you don't want to miss a minute having to go to the bathroom. Ah. So get a small yeah. soda. That's really pragmatic. <laughs> yeah. <so practical. laughs>